Hey Azure Data Factory fans, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about a few new features that we are releasing as part of the Change Data Capture or CDC capabilities in Data Factory. First thing, take a look at my screen. You'll see that I'm using the dark mode. This is a new preview feature from the Azure Data Factory portal UI. Uh, to turn it on, go up to the top right, you'll see the settings. And there's a tab for theme and you can change to the dark mode theme, which is in public preview. So I'm going to record my first full video using dark mode. So, hey, and we'll see how everything goes. Hopefully it goes well. The change to capture factory resource is also a preview, um, but we have some really cool new enhancements to it that I want to talk about today. First, though, I have on my screen is a data flow and this data flow looks beautiful in dark mode and also has change data capture capability in it. So the change data capture is built into data flow. So you can build a data flow in a pipeline to do CDC. You don't need to use the factory resource. The factory resource is very, very simple. It's also meant only for, ch only for um, incremental changes. So you see that when the options in the data flow source for change data capture is full on the first run, then incremental. If you're gonna use the change data capture factory resource, it's only for, um, incremental changes because it uses a smaller compute size and that way it saves you money um, and it's also very simple you don't set triggers you don't need to build a pipeline workflows data flows nothing like that if you want to first hydrate a target um, using cdc what you want to do is have a separate pipeline that uses copy or data flow to do that initial load then start your change data capture process so let me show you what I'm talking about in terms of the CDC factory resources. Let's go ahead and build a new one. And I'll talk you through it as we go. For the demo, let's leave the name to the default name. And I'm going to use a SQL database as my source. Now, I actually have a couple of database tables turned on in this database using the SQL uh, native CDC capability. And that gives you a really good experience for using CDC and ADF, but you don't need to have CDC enabled. You can also use incremental columns to get the change rows that way using a date time and integer field. I'm going to use the product table from the sales LT schema within the AdventureWorks database. And uh, let's see, so it's sales LT product. I click the table and continually move my face out of the way. And you'll see that it's um, when Data Factory discovered the uh, database and the tables, it knew that this table has CDC enabled on it. All right, so we're going to take that table as our source, continue to move my face back down here. For a target, let's put this into Delta. So I'm going to use a storage blob to create my Delta folder. I actually already have a folder in here that we can use. So let's go ahead and point to it. It's called products new. It makes total sense, right? It's in my ADF container. And there we go. Let's click on continue. Now that's essentially it, right? Um, I've got my source, my sync. You can have multiple sources and targets within a CDC. Let's keep it to one just to make a simple demo. Um, what you also will want to do when you're inside of your CDC resource before you actually start it is, first of all, you have to publish because it needs to be registered with Data Factory. Um, you don't need to make triggers or pipelines, but you do want to set your latency. So this is one of the really new cool uh, features that we've added, which is there's now a real-time option to your latency. Also, if you've been using the preview of the CDC resource, you'll know that this dialog box has been greatly simplified. Um, and now it just has these settings, it makes it super simple. Real-time is essentially a micro batch of less than a minute. And so when you click this, we'll set that. The default is 15 minutes, so you don't need to go into the latency dialog to publish and start your CDC resource. But let's, for this demo, let's use the real time so I can show you what that looks like. Now, the other thing I want to show you that's new within the change data capture capability is auto mapping. Auto mapping has been there in pipelines and uh, data flows before, but we brought this now into the change data capture object as well. Uh, and with that, you get schema drift. So if your rows change from your source, uh, they will also get pushed out to your target, even if they're, even if the columns, I meant to say columns, even if the columns are different from one run, uh, from one iteration to the next. Use auto map to get that capability. You can still do the manual column mapping, which is part of the CDC uh, resource. And when you uh, turn off auto mapping, Data Factory will go and discover the schemas on your sources and your targets, and will use fuzzy matching to do the mapping for you. But it's a it's a row, it's a column by column mapping. The, uh, so you see that 16 columns are mapped, and then you can click on the column mapping to see that detail. This is also where you will set your transformations. So because my delta lake here is being formed through this process, there is not the idea of schema matching. So I can't really demonstrate the fuzzy matching in this screen, but it will happen for you if you have a defined target with a schema in it. 
The other thing that's going to happen here is that you can pull down the mapping method. They're all set to direct because they're just essentially what's coming in goes out the same as it did. But you can set transformation to change that data. You can even use the advanced option on here, which will let you use the expression builder to go ahead and define your own transformations for those columns and rows. There is even a, a, um, a data preview in here. Let me put this back to direct. I'm not going to do transformation. Now, within the, the change to capture resource, because we're keeping this as a very low cost option to get just your change incremental data, there is no charge or billing while you are debugging or designing. Um, this is not charged to you. Uh, and this is what the data preview looks like when you're in the column mapping. Back on the main screen within the CDC object, you can also use uh, the, when you have auto mapping turned on, the preview data here. So there's a preview data button here for when your row, your columns are auto mapped, and you can see the data through that uh, data preview experience as well. I think that's about it. We've got the latency set to real time. Uh, let's just publish. Uh, so we'll go ahead and publish this new CDC object. And then when that's done, we click start. Remember, because there's no triggers or pipelines, this is a start and stop capability within um, ED the CDC resources. So all I have to do is click start. Now, because, like I said earlier, the CDC object does not do an initial full load, that you would do through a separate pipeline, through a separate pipeline process. This is only going to read changes as they occur. So let me show you the monitoring. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the database table and I'll make some manual changes so you can see those flow through uh, ADF and then throw, flow through into the um, Delta Lake. So I have all these CDC objects that I'm not using. Uh, this resource at the top is running. This is the one that we just created. So you can see the monitoring here is a little bit different than pipeline monitoring. Pipelines are workflows that um, uh, execute a series of activities for a purpose of essentially doing working with your data or moving data around. And so the, the monitoring is much more based on the length of time it takes to complete that pipeline. Did the pipeline succeed or fail? How many times did it run? The change data capture monitoring is going to be explicitly, specifically for um, rows and how much data is coming in every time that that uh, process runs. So let me just refresh again. And there we see now that the process is running. Okay, so you see that it kicked off. And of course, there are no rows because nothing has changed. Data Factory within the change data capture capabilities maintains the checkpoint for all of your processes so you don't need to do anything. Let's go over to my management studio into the uh, product database table. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, to get an update going, I'm just going to uh, flip a couple of colors in the products table so that we can get some updates going here. So this um, affected 37 rows. So let's go back now and take a look at this flowing through uh, the system with an ADF and to Delta Lake. Okay, and so there is the update. So we can see if we click on the chart, 37 red, 37 written also shows up up here in terms of the aggregated total. So that matches what we saw in Management Studio, which is 37 rows affected. So you can see the other polling intervals um, on the real time um, latency option. So here we have uh, 1246.13, 1246.41, and one other iteration. And then finally here at uh, 12. 4807 is when the changes were detected. And so that should now be in our Delta Lake folder in the lake. And there they are. And there is the latest one that I ran at 1247. So let's go back and make one more change. We'll go back to the database uh, management studio. And now let's flip the colors again. 37 rows affected. If we go back to data factory, let's refresh this. So back there was the iteration for the um, the changes that were found at uh, 1240.07. This time is 1250.28. So the next time that a sweep is done against that source, we should see those 37 rows come in and get written out to Delta Lake. You have to wait for that full process to, end, to complete from end to end, from the query to the processing to the uh, serialization of the rows in your target. And the changes will come in at 1251.30. So now you see the total is the aggregate across this entire time period that's showing on your monitoring. So there are 74 rows that have been written in red. So go back over to the container and there's the new parquet file that was written. So that pretty much does it for the latest changes for changer to capture within Azure Data Factory. And thanks again for watching.